Hugo Munsterberg was born in Germany in 1863. He briefly attended the University of Geneva, but after hearing a lecture from Wilhelm Wundt, moved to the University of Leipzig to study psychology. In 1885, Munsterberg would receive his PhD in psychology under Wundt. In 1892, Munsterberg accepted a position to take over the Harvard Psychology Lab in the United States. Munsterberg's early work in experimental psychology was heavily criticized by his German peers for deviating too far from Wundt's experimental principles. After moving to Harvard, he began to focus on applied psychology. Munsterberg believed there were many practical uses for psychology within hospitals, industrial settings, and the legal system. Munsterberg believed that psychology could be applied within the court system, specifically dealing with the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. There was a situation where Munsterberg was called upon as a witness regarding a home burglary. He gave a statement under oath about what items were missing and what he saw upon discovery of his burglarized home. It wasn't until after the trial he realized that many of his statements were false. Despite having good memories, Munsterberg attributed many of his inaccurate recollections to numerous unintentional factors such as confusion and illusions. Munsterberg also saw differences in witnesses' re recollection of the same event. Thus, Munsterberg would conduct numerous experiments to determine if perceptions differ between people. Due to this phenomenon, he believed that eyewitness testimony could not be considered entirely reliable. One of Munsterberg's experiments involved determining how many squares were on a whiteboard for five seconds. How many did you see? There were only 50 squares. Munsterberg conducted the same experiment on his students. Their answers ranged from 25 to 200 squares. Most answers were above 100 squares. This shows the differences in perception between people. Despite only seeing 50 squares, the differences in perceptions can cause discrepancies within eyewitness testimonies. In another study, Munsterberg would spin a colored disc with one hand while performing an action with his other hand, such as taking a pen out of his vest or closing a cigarette box. He is then asked his students to record all of his actions in detail. He found that only 18% of his students reported the actions of his other hand. This experiment shows that the students were able to accurately recall the actions they paid attention to and unable to recall the actions they did not pay attention to. Munsterberg relates this to witnesses' inability to accurately recall an event they may not have fully paid attention to. Munsterberg also grouped memories into three categories, visual, acoustic, and motor memories. He found that people rely more heavily on one category than another. This is known as an individual difference. Some people can remember an event visually, whereas others may remember an event by sound. This also impacts a witness's testimony when a witness believes they remember a sound accurately, and shape inaccurate visual and motor memories around that sound. Thus, due to numerous unintentional factors affecting inaccurate memory recall, Munsterberg believed that eyewitness testimony was not reliable by itself. He argues in support for a larger input from applied psychology which he believes may produce more accurate and consistent witness testimonies. Despite all of Munsterberg's contributions, he is often overlooked due to his public support and justification of Germany during World War I. In 1916, while lecturing at Radcliffe College, Hugo Munsterberg collapsed and died in front of his students during a lecture. For more information on Hugo Munsterberg, check out these sites.